Isaiah 14, 28 to 31. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, right now, I thank you for the opportunity to stand before you your people and bring them your word. And right now, Lord, I just ask that you just come in and crucify me, Lord. Let none of me stand before them, but Lord, let all of you come before them. Let your word speak to them and touch their very hearts, that your will may be done in this place. Give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, so, as you have heard the scripture read from the 40th chapter of Isaiah, This scripture stands at a very important point in the book. Now, to understand where Isaiah is coming from, you must understand first that the first 39 chapters of the book are warnings and condemnations. The first 39 chapters, Isaiah tells the people of Judah that they've messed up, that God is not happy with them. Now, at this point, the northern kingdom has already fallen to the Assyrians. The Judah is under the threat of the Assyrians. They keep messing up, but God keeps bringing them through, keeps saving them. And, and, but the whole time they're warned that their trespasses have not been hidden from God. He knows exactly what they've been doing, and he's not happy with them. They're warned that the hand of God is going to come down on them and that they will be punished and punished severely. But after all of this condemnation, after all of this chastisement, all of a sudden at the beginning of chapter 40, you see a change. Now, the chapter 40 starts with words that just don't seem to fit with everything that comes before it. At the beginning of chapter 40, you hear Isaiah come and he says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, comfort ye my people, says your God. Speak comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished and her iniquity is pardoned. Verse, um, chapter 40 starts a whole new section of Isaiah. This section goes from correction and judgment to comfort and hope. And in these last few verses of the 40th chapter, we're going to find hope in a time of hopelessness. Now see, the children of Israel, Judah is about to go into captivity. They've already been warned that captivity is coming that they're all going to be carried away to Babylon. Now at this point, Babylon hasn't even risen as a world power. So they know that this is some point in the future. But they've been warned that they're going to be carried away into Babylon. They're warned that they're going to go into exile and into captivity. Now, this was written 170 years before they would get out of that situation. It was probably within 100 years before they ever went into captivity. And then they had 70 years of exile after that. So as you can imagine, after 70 years of being in exile, 70 years of being away from your homeland, 70 years of being second class citizens, of being abused, of being beat down, they're bound to come to a point of hopelessness. And Isaiah, even so far in advance, is speaking to that hopelessness. He's speaking to that sense of loss, speaking to that sense of darkness all around them. 
170 years in advance, he's sending them a word to get them through that time. But you know what? The great thing about the word of God is it's timeless. Just like he spoke it so far in advance for them, it still applies to our lives today. So let's take a moment and look at exactly what God tells his people through Isaiah to do in those times of hopelessness. Now, our key scripture for this evening comes, starts at the 28th verse and goes through the 31st verse. Let me read it for you one more time. It says, have you never heard, have you never understood, well, let me read it from the King James. It says, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The first thing he tells them to do there is the first thing that we have to do when we get into those hopeless situations. The first thing he says is to remember. He calls their mind back to what they have already heard, to what they have already known. At one point in the chapter, it says it has been revealed to you from the beginning of time, from the very foundations of the earth, God has been revealing himself to us. Have you not heard? Have you not known? Now, you must remember this was being written to the Israelites. It was written to Judah. Now, these are the same people who were commanded before that they should speak the word in the morning, speak it in the evening, write it on your doorpost, keep the word constantly before your children. So even though they were falling away from God and coming back and falling away and coming back, the word was always there. These people would have always known the word, whether they followed it or not, they would have heard it all their lives. They would have heard the word of God. So they knew the word. Even if they hadn't internalized it, they had heard about God. But even more so than that, the previous 39 chapters tell us that they knew who God was. He had shown them who he was. It was not just words that they had heard, but time and time again, they had seen his hand move. Time and time again, they had seen God move and God make a way when there should have been no way. Even in the 39th chapter, when Hezekiah was sick, even to the point of death, he had, Isaiah had already told him he was going to die. Now this is the king of the people, turned his face to the wall and prayed. And at that point, God stepped in and said, because you have trusted me, I will give you extra time. So they've even seen God move in sparing the life of their king. So they've seen God move time and time again. It's not just words they've heard. And Isaiah is calling them to remember. Remember what you've heard. Remember what you've seen. Remember what you know to be true of God. And even though you don't see him moving at the moment, it says that the Lord God is the creator of the ends of the earth at the ends of the earth. He doesn't faint and he doesn't get weary. We can't, there's no searching of his understanding. His understanding and his knowledge is so far beyond anything we could ever imagine. So even in those times when you feel like you're going to be in captivity forever, even in those times where you feel like these promises will never come forth, remember that just because you're tired, doesn't mean God is. Just because you grow weary, we have a God who never gets weary. When those times of hopelessness, 
we must know that there is a God. We must remember. And once we start thinking about and remembering this God, once we think about the words that we've heard time and time again, once we start thinking about the deeds that we've seen and how we've seen him move, the next thing it says to do is to renew. Mm -hmm. 